Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about ePaper and how I just killed about two weeks of my time creating firmware and hardware for this custom OSD. I had to learn a lot of stuff and um, yeah, it's going to be up to you guys if anybody else is actually going to do it. This was just, this is going to be more of a show and tell type video. I'm not really sure if anybody's actually going to use my end product or whatever. So I ordered a black, red, and white one. And I also ordered a black and white one just in case for the heck of it. Uh, it's a good thing I did because this guy here doesn't do um, full re or partial refresh. It can only do full refresh. So it's basically just a whole picture. I tried hacking the libraries and stuff like that. I just couldn't really figure anything out with it yet. And the other issue is um, you don't have that much space on the Arduinos because I'm using a 328. I'm using the Nano, which I usually use. So I'm going to send telemetry information from the quadcopter to the controller here. So you actually have to hook up another telemetry unit inside this guy as well. My original idea was to cut a hole here and then place its display in here. And uh, to get on that too, you're probably wondering why would I waste so much time with this kind of display? The reason why is um, the glare. You could almost use this in full sunlight. And even if you get a glare like that, you can just tilt it just a little bit to get the picture back. Where if you have another kind of OSD, you just can't do that. So these e-papers are really cool. The other thing is, is there's no power on this right now. So once you turn off your remote, you're left with whatever picture you want on it for years. It'll always stay like this. So that's actually pretty neat as well. And uh, yeah, so I'm not gonna be using this guy. I'll show you a quick example why, just in case you're curious. So this guy goes here. I'm just, I just have the original firmware or the original demo software on it. I just changed the picture at the end. All right. So this will happen. So say if I want to send like information to it, just changing just the GPS, like saying it says five satellites instead of six, it would go through most of this process. So for creating this red circle, that's how long it actually would take to do it. Now, if you notice the black wasn't flickering, so there might be some way I can hack the library so I can do what I want, but it just, I've already spent weeks and nights, like 24 hours straight on this, this thing here. And uh, yeah, so that's how long it actually takes. So now I'll show you the black and white one instead. So yeah, if you unplug this now, this picture will always stay here. It's just too bad I can't use this yet. All right, so I also ordered a black and white one at the same time, and good thing I did. So it's the same thing here. I'm not gonna cut a hole here and plop it down. Uh, somebody was complaining in one of my comments in my other videos is why did I leave all my wires long? And again, to explain some, some of the reasons why I do things like that is um, it'd be too expensive for me to keep cutting up my stuff to show you guys. So like this example, I already cut a hole here for I had a switch here before. But say if I did cut a hole here for this and then I came up with a different design, I'd have to order a whole new remote just to do it. So what I did was I 3 print, 3D printed this guy here and then uh, he just plugs in like that and I made a lid thing for it like that. So now this guy, I'm just going to glue like that. I know I could 3D print some pegs here. It's just, uh, it was too much learning for me because I had to relearn how to make 3D objects and stuff as well during this whole project. So every step was like a learning thing. So this guy will fit there like that and then glue into place. And that'll be the final thing. So now I'll just show you the display working. Right now I don't need to remote. All right, so the Arduino here, it's just the basic demo pins. So I'll show links to it where I got the uh, the display from or at least the wiki about it. It's just these guys here. I'm only using the RX because I'm using telemetry with Mavlink. And then uh, just the guy here, that's part of the ISP here for this guy. 
and then uh, 5 volts. It says uh, not to use 5 volts for a long time, but 3 volts didn't work. And then ground. And then I also added um, two resistors here for a voltage, voltage divider for um, detecting how much voltage is actually coming into this guy. Also, you had to use some other guy's code to um, use the reference or whatever it's called to get the proper voltage. But I'll, I might make a whole another video about how I did everything like that. This guy here, I also ordered another telemetry unit here. I do have this guy here, but it's at a different frequency. My idea was you could probably just use these two and then you wouldn't have to hack into the stuff like I did here. So I did order another one and I'm hoping that I can just uh, pair just the two receivers together. I'm pretty sure you can. I, I know I can for sure. I'll figure a way to do that. But in the meantime, what you have to do on this guy here is uh, there's two pads here. There's one called USB and one called BT. You have to remove the zero ohm uh, resistor and just move it down to the BT location or just put a solder blob. In one of my other videos, I, sh I have uh, programming these guys a different way or something I had to make for some guy. I also removed the resistor that was right there. You don't have to do that. So on this backside here now, because you did that, or I did that, the first pad here is your RX and your second pad here is your TX. And the only one you really need on this guy is this the TX. So the second pad on the back side like that. Or alternatively, you can solder it on the second pad right here. I don't know. Yeah, the second guy right there. Or on the back side on the second one there. All right. So let's see if I can get this thing to work. So I'm using the vibe 5 volts off this guy here to power the Arduino. After it'll be the power from the uh, four AA batteries. I was thinking about installing an internal uh, lithium battery inside. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do that. And this yellow guy plugs into the second into the RX. Like that. What else is there? Oh yeah, I don't need this guy here. I forgot. I'm going to use the real power. Okay, so this guy will plug in like that. So once it gets power, it's going to tell you to plug in your CX-20. So I'll just give it a second to let it go back to the normal screen. I'm just going to have a power module hooked up to the APM, so I'm just going to plug that guy in. Hopefully the right way, because that could have blown up. Right, so as soon as it's plugged in, my firmware should detect it, and now go to this display here. So I'm just going to move the camera down here so you can see what's showing on the display. So... I don't have much space left on the Arduino, so much so I had to hack the libraries and stuff like that to actually make room for the code because I was uh, way, way over. Um, so what it shows here is the satellite count. If there's a no fix, 2D fix, 3D fix, the compass and what direction. So if I move, this guy will drop a little bit. So if I move this, It should change the display here. Now the problem here is the update time is very slow, and I'll show you and show I'll show an example of that in a second. So if I move this like this, it'll take a couple seconds here to move. So there's no real time with it. So you saw how long that took. And then up here I got the RX voltage, so the my battery here, it's showing up there. I also wrote code to uh, do the percentage on the battery, but I'm not sure if it works yet. 
And then this TX battery doesn't do anything yet. Haven't finished it yet. And uh, the voltage, input voltage there. I'll, I also have the modes. And I'll show that. I'm not sure if it's going to work. So if you listen to the clicks, you'll see how long it actually takes. So I'll just word out, I guess, or I'll arm it. So once I arm it, you can see the blue light on the top, maybe. And then this is how long it's going to take to come up here. So that took quite a while. Just disarm it. So it's disarmed already. And again, it's going to take a couple of seconds. It's a pretty slow display. Now the modes, this is pretty sad actually. So I'm going to put it to GPS. So maybe I'll add a timer. So I took about three seconds or two seconds to change it. Return to home. So here I mimic the, um, the CX-20. So if you're gonna use this in a different quadcopter, I don't know. Um, so then I got alt hold, eventually. Orientation, which the word was too big, so I had to write orient. And then uh, I think that's back to takeoff, which is technically manual. So I got all the modes done. And then now I'll just give it a couple seconds to show you the GPS. It's gonna take a while because it's in the house. All right, so that took a really long time to get the satellites. Um, I also ran into problems with my compass where my I2C connector wires were broken. So I finally figured that problem out and now my compass is working a bit better. Still takes a, like usual on this to update it. Which is kind of weird because the voltage updates pretty quick, but the compass takes its sweet time. So that's kind of annoying. Yeah. That one took a really long time to catch up. Okay, so, um, yeah. So sorry about this video not being a complete step-by-step -step or whatever, just me kinda doing a little show me or whatever. Uh, this display is really cool, to be honest. Um, you should be able to use this better outside, so at least you know what's happening. Alternatively, there's smaller displays, and my next mod might actually be just a small display for the CX-20 coming right off the APM, right on the back of the quad, and it'll just show like the satellites like you have six or seven satellites or however many satellites there is or whatever. And um, yeah, this way you don't have to do all the telemetry mods and all that. It should be just pretty straightforward. Problem with the display, I think I mentioned it earlier, is uh, it just takes up too much for this Arduino. So I'd probably move to um, an ARM chip or something like that, except uh, I would have to relearn Mav Mavlink and all that. I just had to really crunch learn all this stuff in a week just so I can get this all done. So it was actually really hard for me, but might be really easy for somebody else to get this completed. Um, this voltage thing too, I have to do more tests on to make sure it's not being a more of a draw. I do have some little USB tester, so I'll probably throw that on sooner or whatever and just to see if it's actually drawing too much current. So I might actually have to remove this and the TX part of it until I figure a better way of doing it. I want to see if I can get a little bit more satellites here. So what I'll do now is just uh, slap this guy in here, drill a hole in my um, transmitter and throw this guy on and show you what that looks like. And uh, yeah. Actually, before I jump into the uh, throwing it into the transmitter, I forgot to show you guys the extra thing I added to this is when you unplug the, the quadcopter, so I'm just gonna unplug the battery here for the APM, what'll happen is uh, I made it so it goes back to the original CX-20 display. So once it does that, then you can unplug your, um, or turn off your transmitter. It does take a while. 
All right, so once it's back at this screen, and then you now you can unplug your uh, or turn off your transmitter, and this display will always be there. All right, now I'll jump back to the transmitter. All right, so I got it all uh, into the CX20 transmitter. I just drilled a hole right there to put the uh, antenna, and that's what it looks like at the end. I didn't glue it too good there. There's still a gap. But uh, again, that's with the display off. And I forgot to mention earlier with the e-paper, there's no backlight. So that really helps out with the uh, glare. And I also left this sticker on too. So I'm just gonna leave that guy on, I guess. And uh, yeah, so I'm kind of happy this project is done because it's taken up most of my life. I'll just show uh, it working one last time. So this is how it's gonna work now with this guy is when you turn on the remote, It's going to tell you to plug in your CX20. And after a couple of seconds, there is a GPS here, so it should be showing the sats. Oh, there they are. So once it gets above four or five. I think it'll get a fix. Right, I'm just gonna wait it out here to see if it's actually gonna get a 3D fix or not. Should. Unless I just move this guy up a bit more. There you go. All right, try arming it. Should tell you here eventually it's armed, but it's not. Oh, there you go. I'm just gonna move it up a little bit so it doesn't disarm. And now I can put it into say GPS hold. So yeah, it takes it's still quite a while for it to update. So I don't know if that's his Mavlink or my really bad coding, either or, I don't know. My Orient. And it should be Alt Hold. Yeah, and then uh, zero 02 should be Return to Home. It was too long of a word, so I just wrote down RTL slash RTH. Yeah. So right now too, if I uh, turn off the transmitter, whatever's on its display, this picture will just stay there forever. So that's why I suggest turning off your quad first. Well, yeah. So if I unplug the quad, it takes a couple of seconds to realize there's no uh, connection. A little too long, but I just had to make sure. I think I counted to 10. I did 10 tries to make sure, or 11 actually, to make sure it wasn't really there. And then once it's at the CX-20, you just simply turn it off. And then this picture will stay there forever. Anyways guys, this was a really fun project, uh, so much so that I got sick of it and I just wanted it to end. It took up a lot of my life, but uh, it was actually fun to actually finally get everything done. I had to learn uh, the coding with Mavlink packets and all that stuff and this guy here, this guy was the easiest. It was actually the packets or the Mavlink that was the hardest um, and fitting it all on the Arduino. Anyways, I can eventually make a better step-by-step, -step, but I'm just going to show you guys a picture of the schematic, and that should actually be really good enough. And then uh, I'll also upload the firmware too if anybody's curious. Or if you guys need any help with it or whatever, just uh, hit me up in the comments, private message me, email me, whatever. Uh, anyways, that's it guys. Like and subscribe, and that's all.